So, there was a big update for Dying Light this week, and it turned out to be some new Hell Raid chapters for the story mode. The trailer promises new areas to explore in the Scriptorium, new challenges to face, and a new weapon to unlock called the Dark Wand with a freezing effect. Now this one looks much better than the Fire Wand from the last update in my opinion, and uh, it seems to be just a gnarly hand on a stick with a crow skull strung to it. Uh, then we're introduced to the new demon who literally leaps into action and he looks pretty mean to be honest, although it is unfortunate that the trailer calls him Sir Asmerod, when in the game he's actually called Lord Asmerod. So that's a little bit of a mistake they've made there. Um, there's also some new skeleton warriors called the Order of Darkness, and they're pretty much the same skeletons we've seen up to now, except these guys have got blue eyes instead of red ones, and uh, it does look pretty effective in the game though. Uh, I will also be showing you how to beat Lord Asmerod later in the video, so if you want to jump straight to that now, then you can go to the chapters in the description under this video. So let's get into it then. Uh, as soon as you load up Hell Raid, you're going to see the quest there is to talk to Lucius, but all that really means is you've got to let him finish saying what he's got to say. Uh, once he has filled you in on the mission, the quest then changes to go through the portal. But don't mistake the red portal in front of you for the story mode one as I did. Um, it's actually the white one facing Lucius, and you can see there that going through the wrong one changed the tracked quest to raid mode. Uh, it doesn't really affect the story, but you only need to go into quests and track the correct one again if you'd prefer. Okay, once inside you'll obviously have a ton of enemy types to fight again, and since the last update, you now get to keep the weapons you've collected instead of them being reset each time. So, on normal mode and at a decent legend level, it's pretty straightforward stuff really. I was pleased to see that they've also added some more climbing sections and puzzles. Uh, now, before the last update, this feature was almost non-existent, and for a DLC built on a parkour game, that was pretty disappointing. These ones weren't quite as large as the ones in the previous update, but they're still a welcome addition to break up the constant waves of bad guys. Uh, also, now there's gaps to slide under or half doors to climb over in order to get to new areas. Uh, it's a simple addition really, but I like it as, you know, sometimes you have to really search around to spot them. Uh, you can't progress until you do either. To end this chapter, you just have to survive the final ambush and retrieve the King's Skull and then jump back through the newly opened portal to Lucius in the lobby. Uh, the next chapter is called Sacrificed. Uh, in this one, you'll start to hear the voice of a gnat trying to deter you from continuing. Uh, that's quite a nice touch and she does seem to bicker a bit with Lucius from time to time, which is pretty funny. Uh, the tracked quest to begin with is to hunt her down, but I can tell you She's not actually in the game, so it's a bit of a weird choice for the quest title. Of course, there are more waves of enemies to fight, and it's in this chapter that we meet the Order of Darkness Skeleton Warriors. It's amazing just how much more menacing they've made them look just by changing their eye colour. After beating the first wave and moving on to the next area, the quest simply changes to fight the horde of enemies, which in all honesty is exactly what you'd have been doing up to this point anyway. After completing that though, it changes to hunt down a gnat's demon, Lord Asmerod. And after another hack and slash mission, you're going to come to this gap in the bars, and as soon as you duck under it, a health bar for Lord Asmerod appears at the top of the screen. You're safe for the minute, but after descending the stairs and pulling that lever, there's no going back because you are now locked in here with an unseen enemy, and one that I really wasn't prepared for. After stepping into the arena, Lord Asmerod just came charging out the shadows and lunged at me and I only just reacted in time. Well, I hadn't really known what to expect and just stood there looking at him for a bit too long. Straight after that, he literally just ran after me, swinging his massive sword and then pulled off an impressive double twist and jump move that again I spent a bit too much time staring at. I reacted a bit quicker to his lunge afterwards though and this time I got to see it a bit more clearly. But then he pulled another trick out of the bag by launching himself through the air at me and slamming his sword into the ground. It creeped me right out when he twisted his head towards me as if to say, right, now you're for it, before making me dodge for me life again. I mean, honestly, if you haven't unlocked the dodge skill before trying this, you're going to be toast pretty quickly. Uh, I thought it was about time I started trying to damage this guy or we were going to be dancing like this forever. But after getting his health down to about a quarter, or by about a quarter I mean, he busted out the Dark Wand and froze my ass before I even knew what was going on. Uh, I mean, it does damage you, and for a short time you can barely move, and that is a huge handicap against this guy because he's so quick. You can still just about dodge out of the way if you time it right, but all you can do is try and stay out of his way until it wears off. 
Then I tried to throw everything I had at him, but hardly anything worked that well. I mean, I turned him into a pincushion with arrows, but to no real benefit. Uh, Two-handed weapons were really hard to land effectively, and they're way too slow. Uh, none of my throwables were having an impact either. Even the shock bearer shield only held up against two blows of his sword, and I was seriously regretting coming into this fight without many weapons now, especially when he summoned some ghost warriors to make things even more difficult. They do shatter easily though, and using the Van Crane outfit's boomerang ability came in very handy too. But it was when he started to turn the floor to lava that I started to question if I could actually do this with the weapons I had left. So I decided to go back to the Hell Raid lobby to stock up again. That is when I realised that there was no option to go back to the Hell Raid lobby, only an option to quit or to go to the slums. So that's what I did, hoping that I'd go back to the Hell Raid machine and then that would put me straight back in the lobby. However, my heart literally sank when I spawned right back to Lord Asmrod with no weapons and his health was fully restored. Uh, and then walking into the arena, he just casually gets up, ready to kick my ass again, and I realised that if I couldn't find a way of beating him with no weapons, then Hell Raid was effectively now broken for me. So, how did I beat Lord Asmrod with no weapons and no health then? Well, it turned out I hadn't realised that if you look in the open coffins around the arena, there's some weapons hidden in them. There's a couple of orange rarity swords on the right of the arena as you go in there, but by the time you grab them, uh, Lord Asmrod is going to be alerted and he's going to be chasing you around whilst you try and collect the rest. There's a green battle mallet, a blue ruffian sword, and there's also a chance of at least one health potion too. Now going by my last attempt, this still wasn't going to be enough to try again, but amazingly, if you quit out of the game and back into it again, you not only get to keep the weapons you just farmed, but they've all respawned again, meaning that if I did this a few more times, I'd have plenty of weapons and health to have a chance against Asmerod now. Uh, just make sure that you have the sacrificed quest tracked again, and you'll respawn right back in here each time you quit, and then continue. So, now that I had plenty of weapons, my chances of beating Lord Asmerod and taking his Dark Wand were much improved, and my strategy became one of simply dodging his attacks and then quickly getting a hit in before jumping back again. Uh, I wanted to just chip away at his health bit by bit whilst taking minimal hits myself. Uh, I was even able to avoid his wand attacks for the most part, but again, I'd lost all of my health and uh, I just had to run away for some of my health to regenerate between taking damage from him. Um, I was seriously worried again that I was going to have to start all over again. Uh, but miraculously, despite him throwing everything at me, I'd gotten into a good routine of hitting, dodging and eventually I could breathe a sigh of relief as he finally fell to the ground dead and I could get my hands on that wand. Uh, all there was left to do then was place the king's head on the stone and jump through the portal back to Lucius. So, having made it thankfully back to the Hell Raid lobby, I was now able to go through the raid mode portal and try out my new Dark Wand. It actually looks pretty awesome in the game, and when you use it against a zombie, it freezes them on the spot for a few seconds before they crumble to the ground dead. So, unlike when I was getting hit by fighting Asmerod, the, uh, it one hit kills these first enemies. Um, although it's not really easy trying to get the recruits before they're on top of you, as, as you know, they're pretty quick. It will one hit the skeleton warriors too, but it does not however kill the big skeleton warriors. It freezes them temporarily and then they break free and come at you again. Uh, I've yet to test it on every enemy though, but I feel that if it wouldn't kill this guy, then anything bigger than him is not going to die either. Uh, now there was a weird bug after the last update that meant some players found a fire wand in their stashes after completing the quests. I wasn't one of them and it hasn't happened to me this time either, so if you have somehow found a dark wand in your stash this time then let me know in the comments. So is this new update worth it then? Well as I always say any new content for Dying Light nearly 7 years after the game's launch is always welcome and I honestly think that this last two updates have made Hell Raid much more fun to play and the addition this time around of Lord Asmerod was a real surprise. I mean, it wasn't just a reskin of an existing enemy type in Dying Light, this guy was completely new. And his arsenal of moves, abilities and speed made him much tougher than I'd been prepared for. I mean, I'd chosen to play through the new chapters on normal mode just to get the footage for this video and I thought it'd be a breeze. Oh, how wrong I was! Okay, I'm sure that some of you have found it easier than I did, but as I said earlier, had I known how well they'd made this guy, I'd have made more effort to go and loot some good weapons before going in to face him. 
So yes is the answer, this update is well worth your time, and the one this time is much better too in my opinion. So if you have Hellraid then jump back in and have some more fun, and if you don't own Hellraid then I think that now more than ever it is well worth the small amount of money for it, and they just keep adding more content. Right, that's it for this video, and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!